back. So, bottom back. If you see pedi pediatric, so there is a pediatric you know, back and forth children because uh, the blood amount is less, one or two milliliters. Be the pink color. Pink, the baby, the girls uh, prefer the, prefer the pink color, but it's not associated, just I try to have it. So less <laughs> vacuum in the bottle? No, not less <laughs> vacuum. Uh, less uh, blood in it should inoculate into this bottle. But uh, is there vacuum inside this? Uh, there is a va vacuum inside, but uh, this is not uh, uh, measured. I mean, you don't know how many, so it's not appropriate to use bacteria because uh, this is not not the okay that is appropriate um, amount of blood. <laughs> The lilac or purple, so called lighting, because sometimes the bacteria is facultative into cellular, so you can find inside, and there is a, a component, a plus component, which lies the cells, and that's why the bacteria will be free. There is a mycosis for fungi, especially candida, and the one is missing a red color for mycobacteria. But we have also, because we have a special lab, a mycobacterial lab, so called Koch lab, and uh, they are using this uh, mapping in this lab. The general uh, comment for the collection of the blood when should you collect the blood? During the chills or when the fever increasing, not the, high, the highest levels, so not the peak uh, level of the, the fever. How many blood you should collect and how? Of course, uh, you, you should use first uh, for the skin disinfectant. And uh, uh, there are two recommendations, first an alcoholic and then an iodine, usually one in after iodine, but you should wait for 30 minutes because this is a, this is a chemical reaction. And if you don't wait, no reaction, no disinfection. Use, please, gloves if possible. And then after the disinfection, don't touch again the vein. When do we wait? After disinfection, we wait for 30 minutes? 30 seconds, seconds, seconds. Half minute. Then you can collect now the blood. And you should disinfect the surface of the bottle as well. You can see this surface. And uh, because there is a cap, you remove this cap mm -hmm. and then you should uh, uh, disinfect with alcohol. Mm -hmm. Iodine here not appropriate because damage the uh, material on the this this is a, not plastic this is a special and um, during the inoculation by filling you should gently shake the bottle if not uh, then the blood could clot mm -hmm. so before collection because usually you should keep these bottles in into the, in the refrigerator you should uh, remove from the refrigerator and keep it at room temperature for an hour approximately because it should be room temperature, so not cold. Mm -hmm. uh, two bottles are needed, this means what one set, one aerobic and one anaerobic. 10 milliliter or 5 to 10 uh, milliliter into two bottles, so together it's, it means 10 or uh, 20 liters. This is one set. 20 or 30 minutes later, you should collect another set, another new aerobic and anaerobic bottle. And uh, again, uh, last 20, 30 minutes later, you should collect the third one. So all together, there will be three sets. Always one aerobic and anaerobic. All together, six bottles. If you collect more, it's a waste of time and waste, waste of money, not higher the positivity. Okay. So if you collect only one set, appro approximately 85% will be positive. This one is set. the maximum. If you collect two sets, you can reach the 93-95%. If you collect three sets, you can reach 98%, mm -hmm. no more. Mm -hmm. So after it, it's not needed, not recommended, not useful, mm -hmm. not not um, good, not appropriate. And why in 30 minutes? Uh, because you should imagine inside of 
uh, your yes, brain that mm. the bacteria are migrating in the bloodstream, there is a circulation and they can reach, for example, another part, so uh, you can collect uh, in, uh, within 20 or 30 minutes, three times, this is the best technique. What else? Mm. Very, very important, this is mycobacteria, very, very important comment to uh, antibiotic treatment, because this is the best uh, situation if there is no antibiotic treatment, so before you start the antibiotic treatment, but if it is not possible, the next dose, before the next dose, because the concentration of the drug in the blood uh, or in the tissues and, and the blood will be the lowest before the next dose. So, two types of blood collection, one for serological reaction, another one for culture. What will happen with the bottles in the lab? We will put into an equipment uh, automatic system. Mm -hmm. This system permanently is measuring the carbon dioxide releasing from the bacteria because during the replication there is a carbon dioxide production and it's measurable and the equipment permanently check, checks this and uh, if it is increasing, this is an exponential increasing, there will be an alarming sign, a voice and on the screen you can see that there is a positive bottle, you will see the position in which uh, part of the equipment, because uh, there is well organized, and gently move the bottles and uh, always check the carbon production. So, sometimes if you fulfill, so the amount of the blood is higher than the uh, appropriate, sometimes it could be false positive, right? Because if it, uh, there are many red blood cells, a huge number of red blood cells, which will shed the carbon dioxide, and then it's a false positive sign for the equipment. How much should it be, basically, for uh, Basically, uh, there is a scale, and the 10% of the solution, so you can calculate, uh, it is very useful if you mention for yourself and during collection you check uh, and then if you reach this level you stop the collection. So if you fulfill, so the, the overfill, then it's false positive. Or if uh, the amount is less than appropriate, then it could be false negative. So the amount is very very important and the others also. But why do we want it to give us an alarm? Because it means like there is a bacterial, like hematogenous bacterial infection. Uh, but <coughs> for the bacteriological, uh, so not we will not check every uh, bottle immediately, and this is not uh, evidence, not obvious. But if it became positive after, we will remove a small amount, one milliliter, into a sterile tube, and from this. We will make a slide, a stain preparation. We can see that when positive or when negative, according to the stain, we can uh, make a disc diffusion test. And next day, we will see which bacterium uh, uh, grows. Disc diffusion is that the Kirby Bauer test, or is it? Yes, Kirby Bauer test. Same. So we, next day, we can tell the name of the bacterium and we can tell the antibiotic resistance pattern. So the alarm is because we don't have to check every bottle. Yes. Without any yes, alarm. because it, uh, it would take in time. according to the literature, approximately twenty or thirty will be positive only. So this is the positivity rate, and as you can see, that approximately seventy will be negative. Okay. So that's why you don't make immediately a culture. Okay. Because it's a cost exactly. Okay. Is there any question about the blood culture? If not, we will continue with the urine. The urine could be native or so-called uricult. In this university, this uricult is very useful. This is a deep slide. The appropriate uh, is 
if you have a urine sample, for example, here you are the urine sample, and the staff should do this, not the patient. Remove the dip slide from the continuer, then put it into the urine totally because the most frequent mistake is that they put into the half. And that's why we uh, couldn't calculate the number. Or, uh, so put into the urine some seconds, remove and put it back to the continuum. That's it. That's the urine count. That's the urine count. You can see the name here. And the staff are doing it and sending it to the lab? Yes, after it you can send it into the lab, but because it's a, a cultural media. If you keep it refrigerated, it's a big mistake and don't tell in the final exam and don't do during your uh, practice. So keep it at room temperature. This is the best. Mm -hmm. And um, for culture. Uh, yes, because during this the bacteria will grow on the slide. There are three different parts. One part is not divided and this is good for every bacteria. Okay. Currently you can see bacteria on, on this, but normally it's sterile without any colony and normally it's sterile. This is also a uh, fungus on this asparagus. The other part divided, the red is useful. This is a McConkey's uh, using methylene blue, similar to using and methylene blue, is uh, suitable for gram negatives and the pale part is suitable for gram positives and this is for all. Candida also can grow, so fungi can grow and bacteria can, can grow. Not every bacterium can grow, for example, mycoplasma, chlamydia, they not. But the other uh, possible sample is so-called the native urine, native. One was the urethral, the second is the native urine. Okay, I can ask a question. This, this is one side, is uh, just normal nutrient level? Uh, similar to normal nutrient, but a little bit re uh, more rich mm -hmm. because uh, fungi also can grow. So it's not specific? Not uh, specific, but not, not for bacteria. So, so you shouldn't know the name, not specific for any uh, Europathogen mm -hmm. bacteria. All of them can grow. Mm -hmm. Because all of them with uh, uh, And here is for gram negative? Yeah. Yes. And gram positive? Yes. Okay. This one is EMD. Similar because Similar. we call McConkey, McConkey, but this McConkey is uh, also can, dif uh, can differentiate according to the lactose positive, like in your name, McConkey. And the pale is so called TTC, but this is not very important to memorize <laughs> because you shouldn't know. It's just that they are selective media, selective differential media. But the urine could be native as well. It means that uh, not deep slide like this, just the urine in a sterile tube. Okay. Uh, how should you collect the urine? It should be the middle portion, early morning, before washing very careful with the genital area. The first uh, portion of the urine represents the urethra, so sometimes it's needed. For example, if you would like to demonstrate for media, mycoplasma, varpecia, for example, but not for a normal culture. Mm -hmm. The last portion represents the kidney. Mm -hmm. The middle portion is uh, the appropriate, uh, suitable. And uh, if you collect the urine in this tube, you should keep it at refrigerator, so in opposite. So the native urine at 4 degree and uric Two o'clock during they are collecting the 
permanently the native urine and two o'clock they can transport to the lab. Is it okay? Mm -hmm. But next day it is too late. Okay. There is a, a possibility if you have no refrigerator or, or this is out of uh, work or something happened in your refrigerator, there is a, a special boric acid uh, continuum with uh, native urine. So you can see in Hungarian boric acid, urine um, and sterile. So the first word means sterile, second boric acid, this is the urine, the vizalat, and what is the last? Pohar. Yeah. Not really pohar, this is a continuum. Yeah. So you can use boric acid and this is also native, <laughs> boric acid, so native with boric acid, then you can keep at room temperature also 24 hours, no more, because it's a preservative, conservative, conservative, preservative, which uh, can protect the urine. Okay, so we finished the urine as well, and now we can go on to the feces. bloody, so suspected area, from the suspected area, one spoon enough, you can uh, put it into the continuum, and then if there is a second continuum, you can transfer by uh, mail. Oh, oh, mail. Yeah. Uh, normally, we use this one. Get some food in your mail? <laughs> oh. <laughs> that writes in your mail, <laughs> Somebody wrote this no, okay, so if you could transport within two hours, you should keep it at four degrees. If you're not, you should keep it at four degrees. So native sample usually you should keep at four degrees. It's native. There are exceptions, but now the stool also. That's it. It's not. A so after two hours, it requires. Not a big deal that stool, but important. Could be important. And there is another one for stool, a little bit larger stool. Mm -hmm. Always important to mention very carefully the patient of the, the name of the patient, and the, here in Hungary the tire number, I quote, but uh, and others, because we should recognize that this sample belongs to this patient, so it's very important part. For Sputum production, the sputum is also early morning, you should collect the sputum, I mean the patient should collect of course, and um, <coughs> before collection there is a washing of the oral cavity with uh, uh, water, <coughs> try, we try to uh, decrease the uh, contamination with normal flora, but it's of course impossible. <coughs> and from the deepest part, as deepest as possible, the patient should cough, uh, and yeah. then you should collect in the sterile tube. Very important that you should uh, close very carefully because sometimes it goes so if it is not totally closed, then can you can find on the surface of the outside surface of the continuum at B. So, so as early as he wakes up. Yes, and uh, before before washing, and then in the lab, it's theoretical. You should explain <coughs> that we will calculate the ratio. We should see in micro we should stain by gram, and after the gram staining, we will see the leukocytes, uh, uh, white blood cells. This was leukocytes, and we should see the cells and we should uh, uh, calculate the ratio and the good appropriate distribution of the white blood cells uh, 
structure for interesterized tube, which could be, for example, this one. So also very important that you should close or this one. So any uh, could be suitable if sterile. Where's the needle? I take the needle. No, it's, it's, it's not going to be the lamb puncture by seven needles according to the, the rules and regulation very carefully with gloves disinfection so it's a risky so uh, I take the needle yeah, and then I put it inside there yeah okay. inside and then Obviously. transportation at room temperature uh, sometimes if uh, there is a suspect with Neisseria meningitis the best temperature is at 37, but it's, if it is not possible, then room temperature, but never uh, 4 degrees, because it's, it's, it will kill the bacteria. So never. Only in case of listeria monocytogenes. This is important. Shouldn't we do a drop of skin to a You mean that we will, when the CSF arrived to the lab, we will make a gram staining and a methyl and blue staining, but before this, we should uh, make a centrifugation step so there is a sedimentation and uh, there is a. Um, um, help me, what is this? this one and this one, this part? Sediment, but this is uh, supernatant. Supernatant, yes. So from the supernatant, you can make uh, agglutination because you can <coughs> check by agglutination, latex agglutination. Uh, capsule antigens, Neisseria uh, meningitis, capsule antigens, Staphylococcus pneumoniae.
first of all, this is this is a cytoblush together with this special uh, container. Uh, this is a homemade container in in the micro. This is this is important. This uh, cytoblush. Yep. Cytoblush. You can see that this is useful for human papillomavirus or chlamydia. Both intracellular microorganism, chlamydia is a bacterium, and uh, papillomavirus, is, this is a virus, but intracellular, so you should collect cells, epithelial cells. And for this, you can use this cytobrush. You should introduce into the urethra as deep as possible, then turn very <laughs> strongly, aggressively, and then remove. And then you should put into this homemade transport medium. Of course, this is longer, but you can break it very easily, and you can put into this uh, special uh, solution. Mm -hmm. This is for chlamydia, for the human papillomavirus. So the reason is collection of cells by this cytoplasm. And the last, which is uh, very popular and very useful, the swab and the transport medium. For example, you can collect wound sample. You can collect from uh, ear, nose, throat, eye, vagina, abscess, so you should put the web into the area, the specific area, touch the throat wall or introduce into the nose or the ear or for the conjunctiva, this is a little bit smaller and why you can see the carbon, uh, specific carbon in the transport medium. Sometimes the bacteria are so fastidious, such as Streptococcus pneumoniae, Hepatitis influenzae, Neisseria gonorrhoeae. Then, the, if the transport medium contains carbon, then it's more suitable for fastidious bacteria, such as Neisseria meningitis, Mycetes, or but this Neisseria meningitis is by CSF, Neisseria gonorrhoea from the urethral swab, or Streptococcus pneumoniae. For, no swab, for example, hemophilus from uh, ear so swab. Is, is so this smaller is a smaller end for fastidious bacteria. Mm -hmm. The transport medium is uh, very good for surviving. So bacteria will survive but not replicate, but it's okay. Keep it at room temperature, never at refrigerator. And I forgot to mention that the chlamydia or papilloma you can keep. So, you can or you should? You should. It depends the time. Within two hours you shouldn't, but after it you should. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so there's, there was a blue one, the black one? The black one for fastidious bacteria or uh, if, you, if you prefer the smaller spot. Can you give an example of bacteria? Maybe. Depends on the tester. And, and Always. The, Everything depends on the examiner. And, and the, can you give me an example? Example. Mm -hmm. I just gave you Cetococcus pneumonia, Hemophilus influenzae, and Neisseria gonorrhoeae, which can uh, die within some mm -hmm. hours, even if they are in a transport medium. But this is a specific transport medium, and they can survive for a day. So this transport medium, in normal case, not Streptococcus pneumonia, not Hemophilus, not Neisseria, normally for aerobic bacteria is used uh, for 48 hours, for anaerobic bacteria only 24. Why? Because the oxygen can be fused onto this uh, uh, plastic tube, and after 24 hours, inside there will be oxygen which could kill the anaerobic bacteria. So after it, not 
Uh, excuse me, can you repeat the first uh, blood uh, tube, blood serological, serological for bacteria? Yeah, it's so important because you shouldn't know the colors because there are different colors, depends on the eta or heparin or we don't know, it's not so important. But what is important, if you collect for serological reactions, you should use the serum or plasma, serum is more suitable and you can keep it at the refrigerator for a week. If there is a no lab or you should transport a month later, you can keep it at t minus 20, but only once. If you uh, first, uh, then you never should, so it's not allowed to put it again into minus 20, only once. So mm. not repeat the technique. And normally uh, keep it into the refrigerator for a week and that's it because serological reactions you would like to demonstrate antibodies in the serum okay that's it for me this is all for me today and have finished could just sum up which should be kept in the freezer or in the fridge at four degrees uh, native urine yes sputum yes feces and serum so not the total blood and uh, and uh, mycoplasma, not mycoplasma, chlamydia papillum. Yeah. Okay, another the transport medium and this one and this one. So the urica. Then this is a uh, there is a medium, for example, for surviving or replication. Yeah. If no medium, so if native, you can keep it. How do you differentiate between uh, uh, According to the novel biasing is the novel biasing is resistant if is sensitive to Is Does that work for all uh, the or not? Exactly. Every is resistant to. Every this one with the plus is the the one with the antibiotic. Hmm? The one with the plus sign is the one we use it for antibiotic, right? Yeah. من اللي مجبرني؟ من اللي هيجبرني؟ يدي اللي توجع عليه. Sorry. You wanna take? Oh, okay, okay, okay. So sorry. عشان تقدر لابل. Hmm? Uh, 